This is Bob. He's an elite hopscotch athlete, and the world championships are fast approaching. He's fairly confident in his abilities. In fact, there's a 50% chance that he'll win that championship. But Bob is tempted to do a little bit more. 50% perhaps is not quite good enough for him. He thinks that the solution is obvious. Steroids. If Bob takes steroids, first thing that's going to happen is that he'll become swole. And once Bob is swole, as we all know, he'll be able to easily trounce the competition in hopscotch. Muscle is what matters here. In fact, there is a 100% chance that he will win if he takes the steroids. But Bob needs to be careful. The World Hopscotch Authority does not look too kindly on cheaters. And fortunately for them, there's something they can do about this. Indeed, a test exists out there that costs only $100 to administer. And moreover, that test is 100% effective. Meaning if Bob does not take steroids, he'll test negative. And if Bob does take steroids, he'll test positive. Thus, the World Hopscotch Authority can disqualify Bob conditional on a positive test. And there's more good news here. The authority suffers $1,000 in harm from unfair play. That's much larger than the $100 that it costs to administer the test. So if they knew that Bob was doping, they would actually want to follow through and catch him. Here's a mini puzzle for you. Is this good enough to deter Bob from cheating? Think about that for just one moment, and I'll give you the answer immediately. It turns out that the answer is no. Some portion of the time, Bob will take steroids. To understand why, we need to think about this problem strategically. Each actor has two options. For Bob, it's to play it clean or roid up. For the authority, it's to test or not to test. If Bob is clean and the authority tests, then Bob will win half the time and the authority will have spent $100 to administer it. If Bob is clean and they do not test, then Bob still wins 50% of the time and now the authority hasn't paid for anything at all. If Bob takes the steroids and the authority does not test, now Bob is guaranteed to win but the authority is going to lose out on $1,000 in value because of the harm of unfair play. Finally, if Bob takes the steroids and the authority does test, now Bob is going to be disqualified, there's a 0% chance that he'll win, and the authority is going to still spend that $100, but at least they will not suffer that $1,000 in harm. Diagrammed this way, it's clear that neither party can behave predictably. For example, it can't be the case that Bob assuredly will not take steroids and the authority will assuredly test. If that were to happen, the authority should not test at all. They can save on $100. Bob is clean. There's no need for it. But it can't be the case that the authority never tests because if they were to do that, Bob could take advantage of the situation, roid up, and guarantee his victory. But it also can't be the case that Bob always takes steroids. If he were to, then the authority would want to test and avoid that $1,000 in harm from unfair play. But it also can't be the case that the authority always tests. If they were to, then Bob would recognize that taking steroids guarantees his loss. He would rather go clean and see what happens. As a result, both of the actors need to randomize. Sometimes the authority should test, sometimes they should not. Sometimes Bob should take the steroids, sometimes he should not. The specific way each actor should randomize should intend to make the other actor completely unsure about which action to pick. Here, if you eyeball it, that means that the authority should test half the time and not test the other half of the time. 
That's because if Bob does not take the steroids, he has a 50% chance of winning. And if he does take the steroids, he also has a 50% chance of winning. That pathway is a little bit more complicated. 50% of the time, he will not be tested, and he'll assuredly win. The other 50% of the time, he will be tested, and he'll assuredly lose. The key thing, though, is that now Bob's winning percentage is equalized. He has the same chance of winning regardless of whether he takes the steroids or not. And that takes us to the main puzzle for today. At the start, we assumed that the test was 100% effective. Let's change that. Imagine now that the test is only 75% effective. If Bob is clean, it will still come up negative. But if Bob actually has been taking steroids, it will say that he was clean 25% of the time and he was dirty 75% of the time. So it's still more likely than not to catch Bob, but it is possible now for Bob to get away with it. The puzzle is this. Now that the test is less effective, should the authority test more often or less often than before? Will the testing rate go above 50% or below 50% now that it is a weaker test? While you're thinking about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. The hint for today is that you are applying the mixed strategy algorithm to figure out how the authority should be choosing between testing and not testing. Ready? Let's put yourself in the shoes of the president of the World Hopscotch Authority. You might have the following intuition. The test is less effective. As a result, we shouldn't use it as much. That's a straightforward logic. For basically every product out there, the higher the quality of the product is, the more you want to buy it. The lower the quality of the product, the less you want to buy it. Why should a steroid test be any different? The problem is that you need to think about this strategically. Here's the revised probabilities of winning for Bob. The difference is in the bottom left. Now, if he takes steroids and the authority tests, he has a 25% chance of winning, reflecting the fact that 25% of the time, the test will fail to pop him. We're going to call the probability that the authority tests P and the probability that they do not test 1 minus P. Remember, when the test was perfectly effective, this was 50-50. That's not going to be the case anymore. To solve for P, remember that the goal of the authority is to make Bob unsure of which strategy to choose. That means making his win probability equal, regardless of whether he takes steroids or not. Clearly, his probability of winning if he does not take steroids is 50%. It doesn't matter whether the authority tests or not under those circumstances. If Bob does take steroids, now Bob's probability of winning does depend on the probability that the authority tests. Specifically, he wins 25% of the time with probability P, and 100% of the time with probability 1 minus P. If the authority wants to make Bob indifferent between taking steroids and not taking steroids, then they need to set those two probabilities equal to one another. And if they do that, and then solve for P, they get P equal to two-thirds. Surprisingly, the probability of testing has gone up. That means that weaker tests get conducted more often, and stronger tests, by extension, get conducted less often. So where did that original logic go wrong? Well, here's what the president should have been thinking from the start. The test is bad. That gives the athlete an extra incentive to take steroids. We need to counter that incentive. And the way that we counter that incentive is to test more often than before. 
And that's why more effective tests should be conducted less often and less effective tests should be conducted more often. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.